The Holy Gospel according to Mark. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. And the Spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. He was in the wilderness forty days, tempted by Satan. And he was with the wild beasts, and the angels waited on him. Now, after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. The Gospel of the Lord. Cal L was born in a distant galaxy, far, far away. When he was just an infant, Cal L's father sent him, his only son, out into space in order to save him from planetary destruction. His shuttle crash landed on Earth in a field in the middle of Kansas where he was adopted by a farmer and his wife. They gave him the name Clark, but maybe you know him by the name Superman. When he was just a child, Bruce Wayne's parents were tragically murdered, which inspired him to don a mask and a cape and become the Batman. Or my personal favorite, is the story of Peter Parker, a nerdy teenager who is bitten by a radioactive bug that gives him great powers. He uses those powers to make some quick cash and he turns a blind eye to a crime that's in progress. That criminal that Peter lets escape ends up killing his Uncle Ben. And it's through that tragedy Peter learns that with great power comes great responsibility, and Spider-Man is born. Every superhero needs a compelling origin story. It's the chain of events that leads them to become the hero of fame, that central thing that makes them tick. Real-life heroes have their origin stories as well. And oddly enough, sometimes those real-life origins can involve a comic book. 81 years ago, a child was born in rural Alabama. As soon as he could speak, he aspired to be a pastor. By the age of five, he was preaching to a captivative audience of chickens on his family's farm. When he was a teenager, he picked up a comic book, and the name of that comic book was Martin Luther King and the Montgomery Story. He was inspired by the vision he found in those pages. He would go on to lead the first march in Selma, Alabama, across the Edmund Pettus Bridge, and nearly lost his life as the peaceful demonstrators were beaten and tear gassed by state troopers in what became to be known as Bloody Sunday. This real life hero of the civil rights movement, John Lewis, went on to serve 17 terms in Congress and he created a comic book series of his own, a comic book that details his own origin story. This morning's gospel lesson 
from the first chapter of Mark is Jesus of Nazareth's beginnings. Just like our superheroes, Christ did not appear out of thin air. There is a history, a prologue, particularity. There is an origin story. This origin story is captured for us in three scenes. And at first they may seem like disjointed parts, but if we look closer, there is a clear direction and movement. Scene one, we have a baptism. Jesus sees the heavens violently torn apart and the spirit is loosed into the world. Just like in your baptism, this is a baptism in the presence of the triune God, the voice of the Father who is well pleased, Christ coming up out of the water, and the Spirit descending like a dove. There is little time to waste dwelling on this scene as that gentle dove drives Jesus out into the wilderness, into the danger, the chaos, the loneliness, to contend with Satan's temptations and to be with the wild beasts. Scene three, after John the Baptist has been arrested, Jesus returns to civilization, despite the new danger that he himself could be arrested. And he speaks his first words of Mark's gospel, proclaiming good news to the world. In Christ's very proclamation, time is fulfilled and his words usher in a new reality, a reality that Christ calls the kingdom of God. A new community is formed in the proclamation of God's good news for the world. Communities that now span the globe, like Christ the Liberator in Nahualapa, El Salvador, Lutheran Church of Christ in Pella, Nigeria, and you, the community of Peace Lutheran Church in Alexandria. This Lenten season provides us with an opportunity to take stock of where we are as individuals and as a community. Just as Jesus does not appear out of nowhere, we each have our own prologue, our own origin stories of baptism that led to this time, this place, to right now, you listening to this sermon. I know that many of us are in the midst of our own wilderness journeys. Many of you know intimately that you do not need to leave your city, your neighborhood, or even your home to feel lost in the wilderness. Many fear for their health and their lives. Many of us are grieving. Many are lonely, deprived from the company of loved ones. And others of us are wrestling with unemployment or simply trying to stay afloat. As a community, we may feel somewhat scattered and the evils of racism in all its forms tear at communities like the teeth of a wild beast. Jesus could have gone it alone. He could have spent his days living the life of a holy man alone in the wilderness. Instead, he goes with the voice of a loving God, echoing in his mind. He's joined by a dove with a gentleness that is somehow powerful, powerful enough to be in the midst of the most threatening of the wild beasts. And he is joined by the angels, God's holy messengers who serve Christ, just as Christ will serve the world. Lent is not about going out on our own. It's not about our 
own ability to be pious in the right ways, to pray in the right ways, to give up that right guilty pleasure, or to turn inward on ourselves and hide from the wilderness and the world. Instead, Lent is a time for us as a community, joined together as one in our baptisms, to recognize who Christ is and why Christ came. And moreover, why Christ continues to come and be with us even in the wilderness of a pandemic. This is a time for us to hear his words again, as if we're hearing them for the first time. As if our lives up until this point have been the prologue to what we are beginning as a community. The time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. A few weeks ago, one of the pastors here at St. Paul Reformation preached a sermon on repentance. He talked about how the word repent doesn't fully capture the sense conveyed in Greek. Another alternative translation might be to have your mind blown. It speaks to a transformation of our being that is acted upon us through the hearing of God's promise. Similarly, the word we translate as believe may not capture the depth that is implied, especially if we think of believing as our own ability to intellectually assent to the correct beliefs and our determination to hold to those beliefs. Instead, the word trust might give us a better sense of what Christ is telling us. The time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. Have your mind blown and trust the promise. The promise that moves through the wilderness and is not deterred from reaching the promised land. We may wish that we could live in a world without wilderness, without loneliness, pain, and struggle. But the Spirit drives us out to see the world as it really is, in the midst of brokenness. Yet despite all we face, we do not go through this world alone. We are carried by one another, by the divine community of saints and angels. We are carried by God, God's steadfast promise, not simply that we might passively endure, but that we might actively join together to live within Christ's word, to be steeped in God's love, to care for our neighbor, to live out the reality of God's kingdom breaking into the world. The heavens have been torn apart by a God who loves us so zealously to send God's only Son. There is no turning back. The Spirit leads the way into the wilderness, no matter how reluctant we may be. We don't get to choose our origin story. Peter Parker didn't choose to be bitten by a radioactive spider. John Lewis certainly didn't choose to grow up in a world marred with racism and segregation. Yet the Spirit empowers us all to take a leap of faith. Or perhaps sometimes it's more of a shove of faith as you find yourself flying forward, grasping for something to hold on to. The Spirit leads the way into the wilderness and leads us out the other side to proclaim the good news in word and deed. In Christ, the kingdom of God has come near. Have your mind blown 
and trust in the new community God is calling into being. This season of Lent is not about following a formula or prescription, but about hearing the good news where you are now. The time has come. The heavens have been torn apart and let loose into the world. We have been formed as a new people, joined by the good news that Christ has journeyed before us into the wilderness to overcome the powers of sin and death. Let your heart and your mind be transformed. Trust in God's promise of everlasting love, forgiveness, and life. Amen.